this uh, beautiful hot day here. Um, I'd like to start by um, welcome everyone. My name is Robert Corley. I'm the CEO of NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. And on behalf of my board of directors, I'd like to welcome you to the groundbreaking of our wonderful new development here in downtown Brockton called the Sycamore on Main Street. This site will be the future home of 48 new apartments with commercial space on the ground level. At NeighborWorks, our philosophy and mission is quite simple. We partner with local residents, government, and private businesses to get things done for the people in our neighborhoods. We've accomplished this both large and small in Brockton for many years with great success. But the key to our success has always been the strength of our partnerships. What has brought us to this point today is the result of years of planning, hard work by so many people, all of us coming together to make something amazing happen in such a proud and historic city. I have the honor of introducing to you today many of those strong partners who made this development possible. And you can start by just looking at this board up here, or even at the, in your program, to see just how many partners have made this possible. If you remember, even last year we were on this site, this was the host of Prova last year. And I could really use a couple of those beer sheds right about now. <laughs> it's hot. Um, but I'm gonna begin by introducing the mayor. Um, since the very first day that I met the mayor, it was clear to me that he knew not only about real estate, but was willing to roll up his sleeves and get to work with a strong sense of urgency. His confidence and love for this city is infectious. His vision, positive attitude, and leadership has been the catalyst for the renaissance happening all around Brockton today. As he stated in his address just a few months ago, the state of the city is under construction. And we at NeighborWorks are so proud to be a part of this exciting time in the city of Brockton. It's my pleasure to introduce the great mayor of the City of Champions, Bill Carpenter. Well, thank you, Rob. I, I really wish Prava was still here also. This would have been a beautiful day at Prava. For people who don't remember, aren't familiar, this site a year ago was a site of an outdoor community space uh, culture, arts, music, food, and craft beers. And it was a huge success. On the nights we were open, it averaged several hundred people coming uh, every night. And it was uh, a great success. I'm even more excited about the success that's happening here today, though. Um, this project, and I get excited about all of them, I really do, but this one I'm really excited about for a lot of reasons. And it starts with the location here. This is a transformational location on this corner. For anyone that's spent any time in Brockton, if anyone remembers Kresge's department store, this has been an ugly piece of property for decades. And something that made a very negative impression on folks as they came in School Street into the downtown. And isn't that all going to change in the next couple of weeks when folks start seeing a $21 million brand new construction project going up right here in the heart of downtown Brockton. It's another piece of the puzzle. There are a lot of speakers lined up. We're all gonna talk about their roles uh, in this. I just wanna thank all of them personally for their commitment to the city, uh, to the Lieutenant Governor will be up here to speak shortly. Uh, but for the commitment that uh, the Commonwealth has had and the Baker Polito administration has had in investing in this project, making tax credits available, to all the people that have worked together to cobble together the financing, uh, Eastern Bank, Rockland Trust, Mass Housing, all, all of the agencies that are involved here and all played a role. You know, one of the biggest changes that I can see here in downtown over the past year or two is every single one of these projects that we're breaking ground on has private financing involved. 
and it's been a long time since our local banks were willing to lend money on commercial property in the heart of downtown. And uh, welcome back, banks. It's great to have you here. So this project, as you see it unfold with the speakers today, I, I think this project represents what 40R is all about. I mean, this project is transit-oriented development. We're walking distance from the commuter rail. Um, it's mixed income housing. It's got commercial space on the ground floor, commercial space that could even be suitable for a restaurant someday. Um, and it's, it's just a spectacular project. And we just, if you picked up the Enterprise yesterday, you've read about the Petronelli building, just a couple blocks away. A building with historical significance that, thank goodness, thanks to those developers, does not have to come down. It's going to be a historical restoration of market rate housing. And again, another 40-hour project. Our city planner, Rob May, and his team, over the past number of years, working with our TDI fellow, George Durante, we've developed a game plan. And, you know, Rob always talks about his seven-layer dip of all the different tax credits and tax financings that are available. But it's true, we've got several different districts overlaid on this location, and several of those incentives are being used in this project. Uh, it's worked. And 40 hour will work again at the Petronelli building as well. So I know it's a hot day. I know they have not set up the beer shed. So <laughs> apparently they didn't get the memo. Uh, but as excited as we watch all this happen downtown, one thing I can tell you is that private investment does not come downtown until public investment comes first. Government has to be willing to invest some money first. Infrastructure, financing, tax credits, and I, not just because the Lieutenant Governor is here, but if not for the Baker Polito administration, this renaissance in downtown Brockton would not be happening. They have committed tens of millions of dollars to downtown Brockton, and Lieutenant Governor, we thank you. So, so on that note, I'd like to introduce the Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Karen Polito. Well, good afternoon. It is fabulous out here. Uh, and I'm sure that Prova will be somewhere else popping up here in the city. So coming very soon, no question. Uh, I think everyone heard that loud and clear today, Mr. Mayor. I am so happy to be here again uh, to celebrate another milestone or piece of the puzzle, as you referred to it. But I think it's to celebrate the momentum and the progress that you're seeing uh, here in this uh, great city. Uh, it really starts with leadership. Leadership. And when we came into office more than four years ago, uh, we recognized that uh, this city has really strong leadership. Uh, people like the mayor who get up every single day with the team you have at City Hall that thinks about and plans for and puts their shoulder behind the effort to move the city forward. And it takes that kind of commitment to really see a day like this happen. I want to really just extend on behalf of Governor Baker and our entire team, how grateful we are uh, to Mayor Carpenter for his leadership here in this great city. Thank you so very much for caring. In addition to leadership, another hallmark of our success here in the Commonwealth comes with the word collaboration. And I see my colleagues here, Senator Brady and Representative Cassidy, and I want to thank them for their uh, ability to work uh, together uh, in their legislative body, but also with our administration uh, to focus on the work, uh, try to keep all the noisy stuff away from us and get good stuff done. Uh, they're very strong and effective advocates uh, for this city. And in addition to leadership, you need people who believe in you and being from this area growing up here you certainly believe in this city you've been 
tireless in your efforts for it and it's really great to see this day for you uh, given your efforts as part of this delegation to help this city so I'm really happy to be here to, to celebrate this with you. I love this poster. Uh, to, uh, neighbor Works put this together, and uh, that's really a terrific uh, definition of teamwork. Really coming together and all of the stakeholders to make this project happen uh, is really important to highlight and to have more of this kind of effort all across our Commonwealth, especially in our gateway cities, will be really important to see the kinds of transformation that you're celebrating here today. I would like to uh, recognize the team at the state level. Uh, obviously, we have Mass Housing um, and uh, DHCD uh, represented here, as well as the Affordable Housing Trust Fund and our partners over at Mass Development, all working together, seeing state agencies collaborate and strategize and put the, the resources together uh, to add up to what's needed to see a project like this go forward was really not easy. You know, it's a, it's a complicated task, but they have a sort of a, a very well organized uh, uh, effort uh, working together, and I was really happy that they could put together the over $15 million of a resource with tax credits and direct subsidy uh, into this project uh, with uh, NeighborWorks Housing Solutions to have the resources needed to, have, to develop this project and to groundbreak today. So thank you to the whole team uh, at the state level for your work. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I think the mayor's acknowledgement of the private uh, investment here is really important. Uh, that's, a, that's a critical piece of this, that we're all coming together uh, to see this happen. And I would like to acknowledge uh, the plan. Uh, you take a, a corner like this and can now see it turn into homes for individuals and families to come to. Uh, this is a really important um, uh, corner. Uh, it's notable, it has history, but it also has proximity. Uh, proximity to all the things happening in your downtown, but also proximity uh, to the commuter rail. Uh, you might have read today in the news about the cost of, a, of accessing a, a home in Massachusetts is about $450,000. That's out of reach for many, many uh, people. It's why the governor and I and our administration are pushing, pushing hard for this housing choice bill to pass in the legislature to give more tools. to give more tools to communities like this to work with, to be able to uh, site and permit and to build housing like this. Uh, Mayor Carpenter is very resourceful. Uh, he puts a lot of tools in his toolkit and, and, make, and takes advantage of them, uses them. And we would like other communities to be able to, to utilize this kind of a zoning uh, measure in their communities. But with a two thirds uh, vote, uh, uh, level, it becomes difficult for some communities to achieve that level of support. Uh, with a simple majority vote, you could see more projects like this happen. And what we love about uh, housing is that we believe that it's a community development tool, it's an economic development tool, it's a downtown development tool, and that's all embraced here in this project. This gives individuals, both market rate and uh, workforce and affordable options for people in this community, or people who want to be here because they can afford to live here, and they know this is a good community to live in, and that they can get to the rail and get to work, or to their appointments, or to school, whatever their choices are there. Uh, so this works. This absolutely works to bring 48 units into this downtown area. That's 48 more uh, units of housing, but more people. When more people come downtown, they're gonna want more restaurants and more shops and more entertainment and more culture and more activities and more things to do because they live here uh, at night during the week and certainly uh, on the weekend. So they're here, they become part of this neighborhood. And that's a really important piece. So while you talked about it as like filling the pieces of a puzzle, I think about this as the flywheel. I mean, you've got momentum, you're making connections and each one of these 
projects, each one of these accomplishments is connecting to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And knowing Mayor Carpenter as I know him, he's always about the next thing. And I know you have a few items to go over with me today to focus our attention on, on the next thing that we'll be doing together uh, for this great city. But uh, none of this is easy. None of this is easy. It takes a lot of collaboration, a lot of leadership, a lot of focus, and the resources to get it done. I am so, so excited uh, to see this day uh, come, come to be, uh, to groundbreak on a nice sunny day like this. And then uh, most importantly, to see these units become homes uh, to individuals here in your great city. So thank you all. Uh, congratulations. Really happy to play a part in it. And we look forward to the next big thing on that flywheel uh, for the city of Brockton. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Um, when we actually, we received Brownfield's money uh, on this particular site, um, geez, that was maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, the Lieutenant Governor was here for that announcement. When we got our award from the state, she was also in Brockton for that announcement. She's here today for our groundbreaking announcement, and we'll be very, very happy to see her here next summer for the ribbon cutting for this particular building. Really looking forward to it. Thank you for your support. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, I also want to uh, uh, you know, echo something the mayor said. I want to thank Rob May and uh, Robert Jenkins in particular, who've been working with a very long time in Brockton. Uh, and to see these things all come together, everyone pushing together, um, is really spectacular. So I want to thank them for their leadership and their help to NeighborWorks over the years. And quickly, I'd also like to acknowledge from the NeighborWorks staff, uh, our real estate development director, Tim Doherty, is the person who actually put this entire project together. And, and also our great uh, Brockton office director, Cindy Pendergast. So our next speaker I see everywhere. Senator Brady, I see him everywhere. I think he's one of the most accessible uh, politicians in the state. Um, there's not an event that I go to where I don't see him there. Um, I remember years ago when I first uh, talked to him about this project, I called him up and he said, hey, can you maybe meet me this evening at Dunkin' Donuts? Um, so I met him for a cup of coffee and he came in a few minutes late and he was wearing uh, work boots and a flannel. And uh, walked up and said, hey, I'm sorry I'm late. I was shoveling my mother up. And we spent about an hour, an hour and a half talking about this project. And um, he was so supportive and has been so supportive of our agency over the years when we've been battling with foreclosure and other things here in Brockton. He's just been a, a, just a great advocate for the work we do in the city. So please join me in welcoming Senator Brady. Thank you, and I want to thank um, the words spoken by our great friend, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, and the Baker Polito administration. I think uh, our Lieutenant Governor has spent almost as much time as I have, and Representative Cassidy has in the downtown of Brockton, and we grew up here, so thank you for all your commitment. You and your administration has made a tremendous commitment, along with our Mayor Bill Carpenter, who's done a tremendous job in your commitment to our downtown. I know we've We've had a lot of ups and downs over the years. I've been on the city council when I was a lot thinner and less gray hairs, and we were working on some developments in downtown, and we took a few steps forward and then a couple steps back, and I think you've made a great commitment along with our city council. I want to recognize our city council, President Moises Rodriguez here, who we actually graduated together, even though he looks younger than I do, but thank you for your commitment in the whole city council. In our state delegation, as I mentioned, uh, Representative Cassie and myself grew up when this was Kresge's five and 10 cent store. My mother used to go shopping here and the other stores downtown. And when the malls get built, our downtown suffered. So we're making a tremendous investment on our downtowns and turning things around. And as was mentioned, it helps out the private businesses. You know, we have Vincenti's Market around the corner, family owned supermarket that has a gold mine business they're within walking distance of this facility and all the other businesses in our downtown we're trying to help and support. And this facility will help bring more people to downtown to support them. And uh, I know Representative Cronin is in Boston taking care of business and Representative Dubois 
but we work as a great team and none of us get it done alone, as I mentioned. We are the city of champions. We're known for our sports figures and Vinnie McCrina with the music department of Brockton, which is second to none, but none of us do it alone. We have a great team from the governor's administration, all the state people that are here, and our local state delegation, our city council, school committee, and all the people that work in the city of Brockton, because all of us work together. I know John Buckley's hiding in the back now. He's got his world famous bocce tournament coming up this week. We gotta get through. I've actually had to confess, he's allowed me to play a couple of times when we won it, so my name's on a plaque at the Buckley tournament, but it's all about us working together. And I wanna thank all of us who showed up today in this warm day, at least we're under a cool tent today away from the sun, but we are gonna to continue to work together to downtown, and we work to help get some tax incentives for this. You know, years ago, Massachusetts was called tax Massachusetts, and that word's not hold true anymore. We work together to help give businesses the tools they need to succeed and invest, and give them the tax incentives. We did it for John Marion's business several years ago, and we're continuing to do it here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in the city of Brockton. So thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for coming again. Thank you to our mayor, all of our officials. I know Rep. Cassidy is here, and I want to continue to work on your behalf. And we can't do it alone, so I want to thank all the people that showed up today and all the constituents as well. And our 2020 census is coming out, so don't forget to fill out those census, because more the numbers go up, it means more revenue for the city of Brockton in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. God bless you all. Uh, so uh, our next speaker, um, Representative Cassidy, was a strong supporter of this project from the very, very beginning. Uh, he worked very hard with Tim Doherty on this project, uh, working the halls at the State House, making sure that it was funded and was actually the first person to sign a letter of recommendation for this project for our application to the state for funding. Please join me in rep uh, recognizing a warm welcome, welcome for Representative Cassidy. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's an honor, honor to be here. And uh, you Lieutenant Governor, I know you start early off in the gym. You, know, you went up to Lowell and, you know, and uh, the, the Governor's Council and uh, your day's not done from here. But uh, next year we're going to have a brewery up the street too, so just to let you know, we'll, uh, we'll have that. Um, Mr. Mayor, um, uh, 2014 you started off saying block, block by block and street by street. So today I just got a few bricks, so I think we're going to go brick by brick. So there's a few bricks from, from out there. But uh, everything's been amazing. Everything that uh, we've all done, this is a team effort. Uh, NeighborWorks, Tim Doherty and I met over at Elvira's. Uh, it was, just seemed like a couple, you know, last, last year. And uh, he asked me, can I, uh, you know, talk to Jay Ash? You know, good old Jay Ash, my, uh, my good and dear friend. He's in the private sector, so I don't know how well he's doing. Um, <laughs> yeah, not as much fun. But uh, I went into Jay and I said, uh, can we, uh, you know, just take a ride down to Brockton? So we were down down the street on Belmont, and I have a Volkswagen, and Jay is 6'7", six, seven, six, seven. he gets in my Volkswagen, he's like really, really tight in the, in the, the front seat. So I come down here, hit those uh, brake lights, and uh, he goes, geez, what are you doing? I said, this is what we want to build here. And uh, Tim Doherty, he was the one who uh, advocated for that, and I thank you, Tim, because this is, uh, if it wasn't for your uh, adv advocation, this would not uh, be uh, come through fruition. And uh, this, as, as we know, used to be Kresge's, Back in 1965, it was built, and it was the first air-conditioned uh, uh, department store downtown Brockton between Edgar's and uh, uh, Frazier's. So, and there was a piano player that played over here, played uh, music, and I think uh, by this time next year, we'll have a restaurant down here playing music. So I just want to thank you, and um, it's great to be part of Brockton. Okay, uh, thank you, Representative Cassidy. Our, our next speaker is um, our outgoing board chair, David Kilnow. Uh, David will thankfully remaining, be remaining on our board as our treasurer, but has volunteered as a board member for this organization for over 23 years. He is someone I greatly admire, a brilliant businessman, fabulous father and husband, and most importantly, one of the most caring and selfless guys I've ever met. He's just an incredible, unique, and special person. And we are blessed to have him part 
of our organization. Please join me in welcoming our co-chair, David Kilnap. You know, on, on Monday, I was with uh, uh, the governor over at another one of our projects, and I, I asked Rob to take a picture of me with the governor, because, you know, my mother is 100% Italian, and she thinks I'm important. But my wife knows better. That's why I always say my wife knows better. Good afternoon. Welcome, Lieutenant Governor Polito, Mayor Carpenter, uh, Senator uh, Brady and Representative Cassidy, thank you for coming out today. And a special welcome to the young people that we have in the third row. That's our future, ladies and gentlemen. The young people in the third row, and it's great they have you here, and we really appreciate it. Uh, my name is David Killett. I am co-chair, and I want to welcome you on behalf of the board and also my co-chair, Beverly Somerville. Where are you, Beverly? Beverly's back there, and she's going to be the new vice chair of the combined organization. Uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, to introduce our next speaker. Uh, Jerry Nato is the president of Rockland Trust and he was made president on March 16, 2017. Previously, he served as executive vice president of commercial lending of the bank since July 2007 and continues to oversee all of the company's commercial lending activities. He has worked at Rockland Trust in a variety of capacities since 1984 and he continues uh, he was serving as a senior vice president of commercial lending from 1992 until 2007. Rockland Trust and Jerry in particular have a long history of support for the Brockton business community and the city of Brockton. So please join me in welcoming Jerry to the podium to say a few words. Good afternoon. Like a lot of people who spoke today, I also grew up in Brockton. Very short distance from here, so a lot of history. Bill's smiling. Our kids played hockey together a long time ago. But I'm also here today, my role of Rockland Trust Company. And this, we appreciate the opportunity that NeighborWorks gave us, the city and everyone else, for us to be involved in this project. Because this is among the most rewarding projects a community bank like Rockland Trust Company can do. Because basically, it serves everyone, our constituents, equally. Our consumer customers gives them a place to live. Our business customers gives their employees a base to live so they can run their businesses. And it serves the communities that we partner with. And when we can satisfy all those groups, we consider that successful and we're proud to be part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Get this mic up a little bit here. Um, also, a couple other folks that are here that uh, want, I want to recognize are uh, City Councilor Monahan. Where's City Councilor Monahan? There he is. So this is his ward, and he's been part and supportive of this project from the very, very beginning. Um, I see. Also, I saw City Councilor Ann Borgard here. Is she here somewhere still, or maybe she left already? Okay. Um, and also, I want to acknowledge the, uh, NEI. NEI Construction uh, uh, are designing, I'm uh, sorry, uh, building this building, and they were also prepping this site for Prova last year. Um, and also, uh, UTEAL. UTEAL Architects has designed this project. This beautiful building that you see here was designed by UTEAL. So, how about a, a round of applause for them? Okay, our next speaker, uh, Mark Teeden, oversees the origination, underwriting, underwriting, and servicing of Mass Housing's multifamily loans. Leads the development of new loan products and business opportunities, and serves as the primary liaison of the agency's multifamily development and management business lines. Um, this project has workforce housing in it, uh, workhouse, workforce housing money in it, and that money is for the forgotten middle, uh, the middle income folks that are having a hard time finding a high quality place to live. Um, and without mass housing support, this project and that funding, this project would definitely not be possible. So please join me in welcoming. First I'd like to just echo the Lieutenant Governor's comment. That, that's a hugely impressive team. Uh, Most of the names up there are uh, uh, legendary inside the uh, walls of mass housing as being uh, extraordinarily high quality partners for us to uh, team with. 
so good afternoon, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. It's my honor to be here with all of you, Lieutenant Governor, uh, Mayor Carpenter, and Rob, thank you. For me, it's another opportunity to make a housing announcement with the Lieutenant Governor. Uh, it's getting to be a habit and a good one. The Lieutenant Governor and I, along with many others, were in Worcester two weeks ago at another workforce uh, event. And Mayor Carpenter, it's great to be uh, here with you in your fine city where uh, Mass Housing was here six weeks ago celebrating the preservation of a very large project not far from here. I hope coming to Brockton for more housing announcements becomes a habit as well. And I know it will be with Rob who hosted an event in Quincy at another, yet another Mass Housing uh, as well as other funders workforce deal uh, on Monday. Uh, so that brings us to the event today and we're very excited to be partnering with everybody here uh, on the precipice of this new development here in Brockton. We've heard directly from the mayor that workforce housing is something he feels is a missing link here. It was back in the spring of 2016 when Mass Housing first announced a new $100 million fund designated for the creation of permanent workforce units across the state. This came in response to the Baker Polito administration's focus on the concept of workforce housing in their statewide policy agenda. You see the governor and lieutenant governor were hearing all over the state the same thing that mass housing was hearing. Not only do we need more housing, we need more housing at all income levels. We heard from municipal officials like Mayor Carpenter, and frankly from working families themselves, that while all of our efforts to create new housing were good, in many cases there were still people missing. These are the people who are earning enough that they do not qualify for a truly affordable unit, but at the same time market rents are starting to escalate beyond their reach. That's especially true in cities like Brockton, where the world seems to be rediscovering just how desirable it can be here for both individuals and families. With its location on transit and its terrific neighborhoods, Brockton is a place where people want to settle down and live their lives, but that won't be possible if they can't afford it. We know that workforce housing is the puzzle piece that is sometimes missing in the revitalization of neighborhoods like these. And all of us at Mass Housing are grateful to be part of your vision, Mr. Mayor, for what new workforce housing will do for your city. Lieutenant Governor Polito, I want to again thank you personally and through you to Governor Baker for your leadership on the issue of housing. The commitment that the Baker Polito administration has to expanding housing opportunity is a real game changer for cities like Brockton and the people who live here. Good quality housing that is affordable for individuals and families at a range of incomes is tremendously important and we are very pleased to play our part with all of you in helping make that happen here. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm so happy to have our next speaker here today uh, with us in Brockton. Um, Roger is another one of those guys who's literally everywhere. You know, over the years under his lead leadership, CDAC's guidance and support with pre-development funds has taken our organization and other CDCs to new heights. As a person who actually worked for a CDC a uh, long, long time ago, <laughs> he knows firsthand how hard these deals are to put together and how fragile this work can be. In addition to supporting the Sycamore on Main, CDAC recently awarded NeighborWorks Housing Solutions the contract to administer the Home Modification Rehab Program here in the city of Brockton. These precious... Uh, yes. These precious home repair funds will be available to homeowners to fix up their homes and allow seniors to age in place in their homes with dignity. Roger has been yet another long-term partner in our agency success. Please join me in welcoming the Executive Director of CDAC, my friend, Roger Herzog. All right, Mark, you were right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Polito, Mayor Carpenter, Senator Brady, and Representative Cassidy. Um, it is a pleasure to be here. 
I'm one of the few people that love groundbreakings. Now, most people love to come at the end to look at the beautiful new building and to welcome in new residents. And we are all, we can't wait to get those housing units because we've got a lot of demand. A lot of our residents are desperately looking for this kind of housing. But to celebrate what is about to happen here is a great thing because as Rob was describing, so much work has gone into bringing this project to this point. And it is worthy of taking a pause and a deep breath and celebrating what is about to take place here. We're gonna see a transformation within the downtown of Brockton, within steps of the commuter rail, and I wish I had taken it today to get here. <laughs> so this is a great moment. We congratulate all of our funding partners, many who are on that list. And we really want to express how proud we are of our partners at NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. This has been an extremely productive month for this nonprofit community developer since their big announcement earlier in the month about its merger with Housing Solutions of Southeastern Mass. This is going to allow this nonprofit to move up, to scale, to really be able to operate in a much more efficient way and to be able to deliver projects like this and others in Brockton and throughout the region much more efficiently. And it's a great thing. Rob, we have watched you personally grow into this role and your organization with Tim and your great team. Congratulations on this big step forward. CDAC is a, yes, absolutely. We are a community development financial institution that provides financial and technical support to nonprofit community developers across the state. And our financing role in this project was to work closely with our friends at the Department of Housing and Community Development um, under Secretary Janelle Chan's shop to manage one of the bond programs that is helping to fund this project. This particular program called the Community Based Housing Program or CBH for the wonks in the room. Uh, this pot of money, which was authorized by the legislature last year in our $1.8 billion housing bond bill, provides affordable housing for persons with disabilities. And we work in partnership with the Mass Rehab Commission to help disabled families who otherwise would need to live in institutionalized settings but are able to live independently in the community. With the strong support of the Baker Polito administration and the legislature, these funds are being provided to this project and many others like it. It's not just talk. These dollars are coming into productive use. I want to give a shout out to CDAC's project manager, Will Morgan, who worked directly with the NeighborWorks team on this. And I also want to give a shout out to my longtime colleague, Rick Morida of Rockland Trust, who has served as CDAC's board treasurer for many years. So congratulations to everyone. We can't wait to see what is about to happen here on this site. And thank you very much. Thank you, Roger. Um, Roger mentioned our merger, which is actually happening on Monday officially. Um, I'd like to uh, acknowledge Eastern Bank, actually, as a partner lender in the project with Rockland Trust, and also as a, a supporter of our merger. They, they awarded us $100,000 in support of our merger just last month. So thank you, Eastern Bank and Matthew Osborne. So our next speaker, um, Seth Goodall, is the Executive Director of Corporate and Social Responsibility at Santander Bank. In this role, Seth is responsible for overseeing Santander's activities related to Community Reinvestment Act, or CRA we call it, and general corporate stewardship for communities where Santander operates. Before Santander, Goodall was appointed in 2013 by President Obama to serve as a New England Regional Administrator for the U.S. Small Business Administration, or SBA. 
lending operations in New England. Seth is, Seth is also a former small business owner himself. So please join me in welcoming Executive Director of Corporate and Social Responsibility for Santander Bank, Seth Goodall. Good afternoon, everyone. This is really a wonderful day, and thank you to uh, Lieutenant Governor Polito, the Mayor, City of Brockton, all distinguished and honorable state and local elected officials, and for all the partners in this project. To us, it's all about partnership, and it's wonderful to come together to celebrate the groundbreaking. Because we at Santander know that communities prosper, we prosper, when people, businesses, main streets prosper. And the more we can all do together to create vibrant spaces, such as the one that we built here today, is all for the better, and only helps great communities like Brockton grow even stronger. We have an $11 billion five-year commitment to our communities, and this is one great example of how we like to engage work with people that bring more people together to get great things done. So thank you so much, and it's an honor to take part in this project. Okay, that's gonna conclude our program, but we would like the Lieutenant Governor and uh, the supporters and partners to please join us over there with that ceremonial shovel and hard hat or mound of dirt over there for some photos.